this uh, <coughs> lecture is about the uh, uh, relationship between shear and bending moment uh, with inside of a beam and then eventually uh, how do you draw a shear and bending moment diagram. We'll do examples in a different uh, video. So this has to do with sign conventions and how those relationships uh, occur. So we have a beam here. It's got a couple supports that provides F1 and F3. Got a complicated distributed load here. Uh, common terms for that are W as a function of X or Q as a function of X. And I've got a bending moment on it. Uh, I'm not a bending moment, I have a moment, external moment applied to the beam also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little segment out of here and that's just really short like dx long and we're going to investigate what happens. So we've got uh, now the uh, beam uh, cut apart and this is my dx long here and uh, what we need is our sign convention. So we're just focusing in here at the very beginning on this center uh, very small piece. And what we've got is that we're going to say, okay, we need to choose whoops, a sign convention for shear. So we're going to have shear going up on the left and uh, that's going to be our V. And then we're going to have uh, say if we had no W here then obviously the, the equivalent of that has to be that we've got shear going on down on the uh, right hand side. Well using uh, Newton's law we know we have to have equal and opposite reactions. So over here on the right side of the left segment, how's that? Uh, that has to be not in that direction, but has to be in that direction in order for, so when you put them back together, they cancel out. And the similar type thing over here, when we slide these two things back together so that it's uh, one piece again, those two forces have to uh, uh, cancel out we don't see those are internal and when we put it back together we, we can't see those. So uh, up on the left and down on the right for uh, uh, our segment here. Then we're going to choose a moment that goes like this. I'm going to move this down here. And so that that's our uh, M. And then to keep it in equilibrium, uh, or to as we did before, the reaction over here, internal one, has to be just in the opposite direction, which is a right-hand face, which means over here too, this is a right-hand face. It's also got to be going in that direction. And then this one over here, which is a left-hand face. Uh, has to be going in that direction. And see, they do, in fact, uh, hook up. I mean, look at this side and that side are, have the same directions, and this side and that side have the same directions. So, our here's how I was taught about knowing which way a positive moment is. And this is not universally true. There are some places in the world where they take the opposite sign convention. So you can't assume that everyone absolutely positively uses this sign convention. Pretty popular though in the United States. So we've got this bending moment M that's on each side. And what I've done is I've, I've shown a segment that has been bent and it holds water.
That's how I was taught. So we got that here, and that's positive. And this is the way you can remember it in a weird way. Smiley face. You know, if it's Halloween, we're making it in a jack-o'-lantern. Okay, enough of that levity. So that's how you can remember the moment, but you got to remember for the uh, force, uh, shear forces up on the left. Okay. Now, what are the relationships? So I've taken this little piece here, and what we're going to do is uh, say, well, you know, if it's dx long, it's really, really small. So we can consider that the uh, uh, distribution is, in fact, uniform there. And when I do, to, I, I've got to have a force here. The W is like in pounds per inch. So my equivalent force, which I always put on as a dashed arrow, is WX. Uh, oops. Sorry about that. DX. And this distance from here to here, we're going to eventually need, and that's dx over 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what the relationships with, all, with v and m and dm and dv and w, how those are related to just v. What's the, what is the governing equation? So, if you will, I have summation of forces vertically has to be equal to zero. I've got my this one here, which is I should change that color. And not only that, we're going to make it like this. And we're going to make it like that. And we're going to make it very thin. There we go. All right. So the right there <coughs> is this one here. Then we've got this one over here. Well, look, what I'm saying here is, is that we've got a little distance between points A and B on the beam. And now the shear force is different. So we say, okay, well, it's changed just a little bit, which is a dV. So that's this term here. So we've got that one taken care of. And then we've got our WDX here. And that's going to be down as a minus. So what we end up with is, in fact, dV is equal to WDX. Now what we're going to do is uh, note two different things. And that is, first of all, dividing through by DX, I've got dV DX is equal to W. So what that means is is that the slope of the V graph or diagram at a location is equal to the W, the distributed load at that location. If that, there is no distributed load, the slope is zero. So if there is one, if it's positive or negative, we'll have, that's what the slope is going to be. Now, so we, that is a very important relationship. This is very important. Then we've got, holy smokes, we're going to do an interval. So we're going to take an integral of both sides here, and it's between points A and B on the beam. And so we got the integral of WDX, that's this term here, and the dV between points A and B. So what I get here on this very first, this second term here, is I get that v sub b, that's v sub b minus v sub a, which is the change in the shear from point A to 
to B is the area. Oh, I can't do that. That's for darn sure. Under the W graph or diagram. Another very important relationship that we're going to be using left and right. So that one we have to know and we need to know how to actually use it in a problem. So we're there for that, but now how about this DM business? That right there. Okay. Let's have a look. What we're going to do is some moments right around this point right here, point O, point B. I'm going to pick this direction as being positive. And you'll see here then that my first term here is going to be this V times the DX. So that's V DX positive. I've got moment, this moment. There it is. It's positive. Now, this M plus DM term is going to be negative. And then we've got our WDX. Now, this is why we need that distance of X over DX over 2. Um, and we multiply the WDX times DX. And this is really a bracket. Let me make it really thin here. And there we go. It's like this. We've got a bracket here and a. Oops, the bracket's not there. Haven't had enough coffee. Maybe there are too much. It's dx squared. Now let's think about it. If dx is small, dx squared is extremely small. And if you don't think that that's small enough, then divide it by a million again. If that's not enough, a billion. What we're saying is this is zero. It's a second order term. A very time-honored calculus uh, observation. So we get something that uh, should look somewhat fam familiar because what we've got from before is dv is equal to wdx. It's of the same form. And when we go and have a look at the slope, the slope of the moment diagram here, slope of the moment diagram is equal to the V. So, and it goes by point by point on the moment diagram. If you want to know what the slope is, and we're going to be able to use that to help us draw our moment diagram, we just go right straight above it on the V diagram, and that's the slope. And we have here the similar type thing then that we had for our uh, shear and W diagrams. What we have is, is that the change in moment between points A and B is equal to the, again, the area under the V graph or V diagram as it's most commonly called. So those are the relationships that we're going to use and uh, so on the next video, I have like I have three uh, examples for you uh, to show you how uh, different aspects of uh, these uh, items work. So see you on the flip side. Let's see if I can get it to shut.